Howdy folks, this is Father David Uribe, the Shrine Director of the National Shrine of Our Lady of the Snows here in Belleville, Illinois. And as you come here, um, you are expected to uh, attend our daily Mass. But as it happened last time, and uh, as I am offering today, I'm offering my apologies for not being able to offer that Mass to you today. Um, and again, it's not without effort. Uh, was certainly at present uh, to record the Mass at 7.30 this morning. Uh, we had uh, my uh, fellow brother missionary oblate, um, Father Tom Colleen, who came and celebrated Mass. But the moment that he walked out after we started recording, um, uh, everything was working fine. And then of course, shortly right after Mass, the battery probably died in his little transmitter, uh, his microphone that transmits to the video. And so I have a Mass with that's totally in silent and uh, not being able to offer it to you whatsoever. We're in the process right now of installing some uh, sophisticated software uh, and camera system so that we can provide you a um, live stream masses. And so uh, the equipment is already uh, installed and we are working through the software. We're testing it. Yesterday was the first day that we were able to test it. And so they will continue testing and hopefully by this weekend, if not um, uh, early next week, we'll be able to provide you with information about those live stream masses. And then we won't be able to, you know, we won't be using my iPhone and my little uh, finicky uh, microphone system so that we can get that to you. And so we want to do that. We want to be able to provide that service to you because we know that many of you are taking advantage of the fact that you can attend Mass virtually and still be part of the communion spiritually. So as for today, I'd like to offer you a, a homiletic reflection on our readings today. Very powerful. You know, and they do give us a sense of how do they speak to us and how do they speak to us, especially in our times and our situations, especially what's going on here in our uh, own nation. And so in that first reading, you know, here we have from the prophet Amos, here we have a story in which is a glimpse, uh, a snapshot of what is going on within the kingdom of Israel. And what we have is that we have a nation that has broken all uh, abilities to connect with God through the covenant. They have a system in place that only uh, provides glory to themselves. There is no uh, relationship whatsoever with God. And if it is, it is only just for show. And so here you have what's amazing is a priest of Bethel you know, Amaziah, who is telling the king, Jeroboam, the king of Israel, hey, you have this prophet and he's really talking about doom for you. And he's really talking about that, you know, this country will be, um, will be given away, uh, will be taken over, and the people will go into exile. And you as king will die at the sword and your family will come to destruction. And of course, you know, there, if, if a prophet is speaking and if it's a prophet who doesn't have any personal motives, they could very well be the person, uh, the messenger from God. And so here it is, is this priest, Amaziah, who is saying to the prophet, you know what, you're, you're going to destroy, you know, what we, what we built up all this whole life. You, you want to destroy our nation uh, with your prophecies. Now, get out, you know, flee the land. And so they don't take the words of uh, caution uh, very well. And what they do is they do away with that voice speaking out. And so it's important for us to remember, you know, what are the voices, what are the messages that we're getting and how are we dismissing them? Because we can't phantom the fact that, you know, things will uh, be different or we can't accept change. And so, in that first reading from Amos, you know, this is where the prophet is saying, I have no intentions, I have no personal agenda, I have nothing, but this is a message from the Lord, and the Lord is saying that uh, destruction will come if you continue to live only for yourselves and not for the glory of God. And so then we hear in the Gospel reading from the Gospel of Matthew, 
here you have Jesus who is dealing with um, uh, the same type of authority, who doesn't want to make any changes, doesn't want to, you know, doesn't want anybody to rock their boat in terms of their comfort and whatnot. And so even when Jesus is curing the sick, um, as is told in the story of the gospel today about the paralytic man who comes in, and because there's great faith and because people recognize that Jesus is a prophet and Jesus does create miracles, that it's faith that allows that those miracles to happen. And so uh, Jesus, knowing that the authorities are thinking otherwise, he even proves to them what is easier. If you, if you say that the Son of Man has the authority to forgive sins, and so Jesus shows that I do have enough uh, authority to forgive sins just as much as to tell this paralytic man to rise, take up his mat, and go home. And so Jesus proves it, and yet they are unmoved. And so uh, the people recognize the miracle, and they began to see Jesus as much more than just a prophet. And so this really does remind us and ourselves, what is it that we see in everyday life what is it that we see in our uh, daily routines that still give glory and honor to the uh, magnificence of God's uh, power, of God's love, of his mercy, uh, of the virtues that we are always part of? And how do we see those and convince that there is a God and that there is a God in control of everything? If we continue to only rely on our logic, if we only depend on our own strength, then we will fail over time. And so this is an opportunity for us to recognize how do we continue to allow God to be part of our daily lives? Where do we allow to grow in faith? And how do we continue to have that hope that God is in control? And that if we allow God to be in control, then things will work out the, the, the way in which things need to work out. And so let us always be open to God's invitation, especially an invitation in relationship with him, but uh, allow him to use us as instruments of hope, of faith, of trust, of love, and especially his mercy throughout all the, the things that happen in our daily life. Let us be the people of God that we're called to be, especially through our discipleship. And so with that, I bid you farewell, I invite you to visit uh, a mass uh, that's offered in some other place, whether it be your local parish or whether it be at a, another shrine or a basilica or cathedral or whatnot. But I ask you to come back and we will make sure that we have mass for tomorrow as well. Many blessings to you this day and always.